So as was said on Sunday, <clears throat> after meditation, and we know there are other ways that it can be done, that we find ourselves in a state where we no longer have to bring uh, things to the subtle level of mind. We're already resting in that state of Satchitananda. So uh, again, playing with the energies in this state. Let's see what comes up after these several stories. The first story is about a certain carpenter who was given the task of making a coffin for a certain dead man. But uh, after he'd fashioned the coffin, he found that he had some wood left over. So he thought to himself, oh, I have enough wood here to make myself a violin that I could play. So he began to fashion the wood in the shape of a violin. But that night, he had a dream. He dreamt that the dead man came to him and warned him, do not make this violin. There will be dire consequences. But the next morning, because the man did not believe in dreams, he completely put it aside and proceeded with the task of shaping and putting together the violin. And again that night he had another dream. Again the dead man, more forcefully this time, warning him that he should not make this violin. But the next morning, of course, again, the, ma the man's carpenter's mindset was such that dreams were not to be given any credence. And so he polished the wood and made the violin. Well, uh, when it was done, he found that it was a beautiful instrument. So he fashioned a bow from the same piece of wood. But since he didn't finish his task until late in the evening, he decided that he would not play the violin until the next day. And so that night he had a dream again. Again, the message from the dead man was very forceful. Do not play this violin. It will have dire consequences. But again, the next morning, the man gave no credence to the dream. And he picked up the violin and with the bow, he drew the bow over the strings and it seemed that of its own volition a plaintive, sad song emanated from the instrument and just as this piece of music was completed the carpenter was surrounded in darkness. Black enveloped him. He was very afraid. And he ran to the window to look out. But when he looked out of the window, all also was black. And then he felt himself being drawn into a vortex drawn down and down and down until he realized that he was in quicksand and although he fought mightily the quicksand swallowed him and he took his last breath later on that day the carpenters son came and found his father dead clasping the violin. And that night the son had a dream that he was visited by the dead man 
who told him the whole story of what had happened. The very next day, the carpenter's son burned the violin and as it went up in flames, he could clearly hear the sounds of his father <coughs> wailing and he knew that his father's son, his father's soul, was in torment. This second story of a merchant who had an only son who he loved very dearly. But this son had a very spiritual bent and he spent all of his time reading the sacred texts and undertaking the rituals of the faith of the day. But the son had a dream. <coughs> he dreamt that he should visit a certain great spiritual master. But when he told his father his dream, his father, who had no truck with dreams, just said to him, it was a foolish dream, take no notice. But the days passed and it seemed that the young man, even though he followed his practices and read his sacred books, was becoming pale and worn. And again he had the dream he should visit the spiritual master. Again he told his father, and again his father, having no truck with dreams, said, no, it's too expensive, how can we make this journey, and it's only a dream. But the sun became weaker, more pale, more worn, and again he had the dream, pressing him to visit this spiritual master. And again the son approached his father and begged him, begged him, please, please let us go. So even though the father did not believe in the dreams, he could see that his son was becoming weaker. And so he decided to placate him. And so they set out on their journey. But they hadn't gone very far when the wheel of their wagon fell off. And even though the father had no truck with dreams, he was superstitious. And he said, you see, you see, the wheel has fallen off our wagon. This is a sign that we should not go. And so the father forced them to turn back. But again, the young man, growing weaker, begged and begged his father, please, please take me. And so they set out again. This time they came to a place where overnight there was a great storm and the river had risen so that it was impassable. Again, the father read this as a sign. You see, it was just a dream. We're not meant to go. And he forced them to turn back. But the young man became weaker and weaker. And so the father again set out. And this time they neared the place where the great master lived. But being late at night, they decided to stay at an inn. And when they were in the inn, the father got talking to a man at the bar. 
And when that man asked the father where was he going and he was told, oh, the man said, this fellow is a fraud. He pretends to be a spiritual master, but he is just a fraud. Now this man was the evil one in disguise, but the father took his words and turned to the son and said, we will not visit this master. I've been told that he's a fraud and he forced them to return. Not long afterwards, the young man died. The father, the merchant, was overcome with grief at losing his only beloved son. And then he had a dream. He dreamt that his son came to him and begged him, go yourself to visit the master. The next day, because of the grief that he'd undergone, he took credence of the dream. He believed that his son had really come to him, and so he set out to visit the great spiritual master. When he arrived at the abode of the Master and was welcomed into the Great One's house, the Master sat on a cushion and looking up at the merchant as he entered with great compassion and tears flowing down his face, the Master said, if only. It's asked of you, what was it that this master said to the merchant who had lost his son? If only. With compassion and tears rolling down his What was it that the master said to the merchant? If only. What is it about this place we now find ourselves? The meeting place of nitty-gritty, occult and interrelatedness.
What is it about this state? So carrying all that chatter. Yes. <laughs> yes. broken down and what was broken down and he didn't believe in dreams but he believed in superstitions of the day yes. the belief, belief systems broken down so if we really examine it we find in this place that we don't have any belief systems. Mm. Isn't it so? Mm. Yeah, it just comes to that trust, so it's, there's no barriers to the trust. You don't um, not have mm. trust because it's come, the messages come Oh, this is a channel. It's so interesting where this is going, isn't it? Really? And what we believed in, like yesterday, mm. means nothing today. Today? Mm. No. Mm. No. So that's why you feel like you're standing on the edge of the cliff all the time. All the time, yes. Or standing on mm. nothing. No. You have no ground on which to mm. stand at all. No truth. No belief, no creed. Thank you. <laughs> 